place in the finals next summer. Chris Tony, first guy up. What's up, man? Jimmy, what's going on? How are you? Hello, Master Colgate. Pow. All right. Awesome stuff. As guys come in and out and do their thing um, and log on, please start asking your questions. Let me know what you guys have going on as far as sticking points and problems in your game, and we can start addressing them. We won't waste uh, any time. Um, I just got done doing a Skype call with one of my yearly mentor students. And um, one of the things that we talked about was uh, disqualifiers and breaking rapport and what the importance uh, of breaking rapport um, is and why we need to do it. And I'll just share a little bit of insight on it, right? So the number one reason that guys don't seem to be able to build the correct tension with girls is because there isn't any break of the guy wanting to get along with the girl the entire time the interaction is going on he's constantly chasing for this alignment and doesn't ever show her the willingness to walk away which we know is a very attractive evolutionary uh switch so allowing yourself to forcefully and put into your game a breaking of rapport soundbite something that goes into your game that just disqualifies yourself or allows the set and the obstacle um and the target and everybody in it to see that you're not after anybody that you have no agenda is the importance of it also by showing that you're not being agreeable within the set you separate yourself from most guys right it says to the girl and to the set that you are accustomed to this level of interactivity. You are accustomed to this level of aesthetic uh, appearance by the set and the, or the target. You are accustomed to whatever level uh, socially they are. So much so that you don't care to be agreeable. Because if you weren't accustomed to it and you were trying to impress, you were trying to go out of your way, you would just be agreeable. You would be going against things that you believe in because you would be trying to accommodate for the alignment. So you're disqualifying yourself and, and using these break rapport tactics allows you to kind of separate yourself from, I want to get along with these uh, people. I want something from them. I need something from them. And into, I can say and believe whatever I want because there's no seeking of alignment here. So a good example um, of that is when, if I ask a girl a question, right? If I give her a qualification question, we talk about that one, great, you know, we got a couple of whys out of it, awesome. Then I ask her something else and I say, you know, are you a sit by the pool kind of girl or are you a lay down, uh, lay out by the beach kind of girl? And she says, pool. If I come in and I say, okay, that's it, you ruined it, we're broken up, you should have said sit out by the beach, we would have been golden, but right now I need my sweaters back, I want my CDs back, right? And I hit her with this um, breaking rapport, I'm not trying to get along soundbite, it allows her to feel that, okay, maybe I don't have it there like I thought I did. So let me compliance test a bit to see as well. And that allows you to both kind of grow together as opposed to if you don't give her that, A, she doesn't feel that way, but B, also, if she's really into you, she can't repair it. She can't say, well, no, I mean, I, normally if I'm on vacation, I'll go lay out by the beach, but if I have the option, I'll go sit by the pool because it's cleaner, right? She almost explains it a bit more because she doesn't want that illusion that was painted in your mind of who she was to be tarnished by a bad answer. So 
there's that moment where she'll rectify her answer herself. So we want to disqualify, we want to break rapport so that it separates us from every other guy, but then also allows the correct tension to be built into the set. Um, if you're not doing this, if you're not negging the target or if you're not picking a target uh, so that you neg, right? You're getting along with everybody and that's not the correct narrative. The narrative is that you get along with everybody in the group except the target. And then after uh, stories have been shared and qualification has been done by both parties, you guys come back and say, hey, me and your friend, we like each other. Are you cool with that? And the friends say, yeah, absolutely, sure. Because you're a cool guy. You've been treating the friends, uh, the friends cool. But then when you guys leave again, they'll say, wait a second, they like each other? Weren't they not getting along? At the wait a second, they were flirting. That's what flirting is. Oh my God, I forgot what that looks like. And then boom, it just all comes together. So yes, that's the the objective in breaking rapport. Um, yo, how uh, to open walking sets? Okay, great question. Um, you asked this earlier in the week. I told you if you tuned in, I would uh, resolve it for you. So let's get into it because you tuned in. Well done. Okay, so for a walking set, right? What happens is, is that if we can look at my finger as, you know, one is you, one is the set. What happens is, is that most guys, right? If this is, let's say the girl, this is us. And we're walking by, most guys try to open the girl when she's here. Like they would be if they were walking to a set that wasn't moving. However, by the time that you start your opener here, by the time you finish your opener, she's actually there. So by the time any thinking time elapses, she's a little bit further out. If you don't stop, which you shouldn't, you're going to be out here. That's too much distance. And then objects that stay in, uh, uh, are in motion are going to stay in motion. So the idea is to open the set when they're further out so that by the time they hear the opener and think about it and process it and do all that, they're still not even that close to you. The way you do it is you project your voice, AKA your opener out further. So don't wait for them to get close. You're gonna have to throw and go. As you guys are walking, you'll have to say, hey, settle this for me. Brad Pitt or Angelina Jolie, one night, who do you pick? And as she makes her way walking past you, she'll have a response because she's right in front of you and hasn't walked past you yet. And if you get that timing correct, then any walking set is doable, even if they're across the street, really. You know, um, guys that have been on boot camp with me have seen me open while we're waiting at a red light inside of the Uber that we're, that's taken us to where we're going. So um, anything uh, can happen as long as you're projecting your voice outward enough to where the timing creates itself so that she's still placed in front of you when uh, she has to answer. Make sense? Let me just say hi to everybody here. What's going on, everybody? Hello, hello, hello. Guy, Alion. I can't even, I'm not even gonna try to pronounce. Fakurashi. Enrique. Varun, what's going on? Jimmy. Now what stage does breaking rapport go in? Um, several stages. It goes in, in uh, every phase, depending on the girl, right? The more attractive the girl is, the more I want to break rapport so it doesn't show her that I'm after her. Um, it comes in the form of a neg as soon as I open, right? Hey guys, Brad Pitt or Angelina? Oh, no way. Really? You're going to go with Brad Pitt? See, I would say the same, but you know what my reasons are? And then I can get into it, even though we agree, right? I can still say, oh, stop it. You're one of those? Oh, no way. Right, I can get into it uh, very early on, and then it can also be throughout my phases, throughout stimulators and my captivators and and everything else. Any time that I get a chance to kind of uh, pepper in a little bit of uh, disqualifying or a bit of okay, let's slow this down. Oh, you're one of those. Any time I get to throw those in, it's going to be uh, beneficial um, to my to me and my set. Um, the more socially savvy, the more I want to do it, right? I'll have to, I'll neg uh, a socially savvy girl way more than a, uh, a regular girl that necessarily doesn't need for me to do that 
as much because she's not used to the amount of guys that are coming up to her and hitting on her all the time or not aware of it um, and all that. So yes, absolutely. At any point in your set where it's uh, needed, it's a tool for an artist and the artist needs that tool to certain capacities at different points in the set. It's me giving you red paint and you trying to paint a portrait where sometimes red paint is more needed than blue and vice versa. What's going on? Darius, Ali, what's up? Morales. Okay, good. Thank you. You find girls in the places where the girls you want are at. Most guys don't think that through. And as obvious of an answer as that is, most guys don't take the time to think of it. Um, for me, I like to consider the fact that I'm into a particular type of girl and those type of girls are into particular types of activities. And if I place myself at those activities, I run into more of those girls. And if I run into more of those girls, there's more of an opportunity to talk to those girls. So just picking out first what type of girl you're into can help a lot with where to find them. You know, I normally the girls that I find attractive have have a small dog. So they go to a boutique pet shop as opposed to a regular pet shop and you can meet girls there. So thinking outside the box by knowing what type of girl you're into can dictate where you choose to go in order to find and meet and hopefully talk to these girls. High value places. High value places will yield the highest percentages of high value sets. If there's a members only, if there's a hard door, if it's exclusive, if it's hard to get in, if there's waiting lists, if it's tickets only, if it's who you know only, all these places are gonna have a lot more value then you just going out to whatever hot club it is you think you're going out to on a Friday, Saturday night. That's where you meet most of the, the high end and high value uh, sets is in those uh, venues. Jacobs, what's up? Pana, Pana Yitz, what's up? Drew, what's up? Another question, should I start opening sets as soon as I get into the venue or wait for the sets? that really attract me. You should open sets as soon as you get into the venue. Ideally, you wanna open the first set to the left or the first set to the right. Doesn't matter, doesn't make a difference. It's just a rule you, you make to yourself and say, okay, as soon as I walk into the venue, I'm quickly in set. You should be in set within the first minute of walking into a venue. Almost like you went there and you ran into somebody that you knew, right? So very, very quickly you go in. Um, get out of the headspace of going into sets that you're just attracted to because you need the social warm up. You need to do four sets warm up, three sets warm up at least before you're in a groove to be able to handle the sets that you want. Yes, yeah, sometimes you go in first set, you know, one hit wonder, boom, it, it happens. You know, there's not a lot of uh, sets in the place anyway, so you go to the hottest set and there, boom, it works. But more often than not, you're gonna have to show social dynamics to the hottest set in the room. You're gonna have to show that you're dynamic enough to be seen socially making people laugh and them enjoying you so that then you can talk to the to the people that are there in VIP or the people that work there or um, the bartender, the bottle girls and et cetera, right? So you wanna be seen talking to people. If you're seen as the social guy, it also gives more context to when you go into the set you want because if they have seen you in set before and you were just locked in, not the guy on the outside hitting on the girls, but guy, the guy on the inside, right? Then when you go up to their group, there's almost a more welcoming, let's find out what everybody else was experiencing uh, uh, now that he's here, if they don't see you in set and you're just waiting for whatever set, then when you go up to their set, they kind of pinpoint you as a guy with an agenda. Why were you not talking to anybody? And now you're here trying to talk to us with this fake smile and these stories, Ugh, go away. And then you get more of that. So hopefully that answers your question there. Bob, what's going on? Centron, what's up? 
Zenly says, thank you, very helpful. Good, I'm glad. Thanks once again, absolutely. What's going on, Radu? Francisco, what's going on? Right, so, um, another thing that um, might be beneficial to guys because you guys seem to ask me a lot about them uh, every week and maybe I haven't been so clear as to how to um, accomplish them. So on my weekly mission, which you guys should be doing uh, every week, um, there is on every Sunday, there is a start, stop and continue. And very quickly, what that means is every week, right? And you should be doing this ideally every time you go out um, and if not, then every week at least, you should be looking through your notes, looking through the information that you've gathered from your sets um, that week and identifying two to three things that you need to start doing, two to three things you need to stop doing, and then two to three things that you need to continue doing. And this is just very easy bullet points of what can be done actionably. can be done practically. What that means is you don't say, I need to be more fun. You say, I need to, uh, uh, don't say start being more fun. Say start uh, telling X joke, which is a funny joke um, um, with delivery, right? And as specific as you can, and if you go to the next level, it's tell X joke with um, self-amused delivery. And the more detailed you can keep it and the more practical you can make it, the easier it is to execute once you look at it in field and you're saying, shit, I got to work on that. Because if you just say be more funny or be more fun, it's not necessarily going to help you because if it was actionable already, you would be doing it. So more practical ways of writing those down makes it more easier to approach and then execute. So yes, three things, two things for each. Um, and then you're taking those things into the following week so that you can get your game and get your skills uh, better while you're working on the material, while you're working on delivery and everything else, body language. It's just the way, it's the better way to get more for the time that you're putting in. Let's see here. Can you give another example of breaking rapport? Um, yes, so let's say for example, um, you know, if, she says something like, uh, oh, you know, when I was younger, I used to be, I used to be one of those girls uh, that made fun of people, you know? That was horrible. And you can go, really? You made fun of people? Yeah, no, I have a whole anti-bully thing. Once I meet a bully, I have to just not talk to them anymore. It's just not right. So I'm gonna leave. You enjoy your night. It's been a pleasure talking to you. And I hope to never run into you again. All right, take care. And then you just stay there and you go and you laugh it off and then you just get into your next thing, right? The idea is to kind of just make yourself opinionated and have a, a stance on something and that you're willing to exercise that opinion in a playful way so that it doesn't make it that you agreed on it, but that you respectfully disagreed and that's okay because what it kind of sets up is Later on, you know, six months from now when you're together, there's going to be this uh, point where you guys aren't going to agree on stuff. And is it okay to disagree on stuff or is it not okay to disagree on stuff? That's where that first kind of little thing gets done. And that's where you have to kind of set that up is there. Let's see here. Hello, hello, everyone. Last question. What to do when a night in field starts going bad? How to shift momentum? Um, the only way to deal with the night going bad is to realize why it's going bad and make the adjustments. If you can get yourself to the point of looking at what's going on first, realizing that there's something wrong in how you're approaching it. And what I tell guys uh, to do to check that is 
whatever phase is not going well, like if you're not opening, if nothing's opening, it's not that the opener, the words isn't right. It's the body language isn't right. It's never what you think it is. It's always most likely the phase before. Um, for example, if a guy says, hey man, when I try to get my stimulators out, it's not really hidden. Well, I would say that your opener hasn't hit correctly first, because if your opener did, it would buy you the time for the stimulator. Um, if a guy says, hey, I was trying to qualify and I couldn't get any you know, interest out of her or any DHVs out of her, I would say, don't worry about qualification. Go back to your DHVs, go back to your captivators because you adding value correctly is what's gonna make her qualify. So first, check the phase that you're in and say, have I done things correctly? But know more likely that it's the phase before it. So if you're not opening anything, then it's most likely your body language. And if it's not your body language, then it's the way you're dressed, it's how you smell, it could be anything that initially throws people off. If you're just having a night where you're going in and you're having bad results, also what you can do is take a look at what you're considering bad, right? Are you not you know, getting the girl? Is that why it's a bad night? Or is that why it's not going well? It's because you're not getting the girl? Is it because you wanted to make out with somebody and shit, the first two sets, you didn't make out with anybody? Because if it's those kind of things, then you're going to fuck yourself very, very long term in this game and feel shitty about not doing any kind of work that you possibly could be doing to feel better about shit. So aligning the goals and uh, making yourself more process dependent instead of outcome dependent is going to change how you, per how you uh, accept and perceive that um, as the night progresses. So checking those two things usually helps out. Andre, what's up? What questions have been answered so far? All of them, all the ones that were here have been answered. Hey Colgate, can you give an example of a A2 routines and how to run it? Well. The way that I've broken down A2, right, is A2 is actually two sections for me. It's a section where I want to create fun and raise stimulation, right? So it's called the stimulator. And then the next part is where I want to be seen on the inside of the group telling a more uh, detailed, rich story that has uh, illicit, um, that has uh, intentional DHVs so that I can start to flip attraction switches. So the way that I accomplish both is, uh, one is for the sake of fun to build a buying temperature. The other one is for the sake of showing them that I'm interesting and that there is a guy behind all the fun and difference that they've seen so far. Um, the first part, right, it could be something like, oh, you two are best friends. I can so tell you guys make the same exact facial expressions. Like watch this, ready? Do you guys use the same shampoo? See, it doesn't even matter. The fact that you guys looked at each other just screams out, best friends, and you looked first, which means you kind of run shit, right? That's uh, a buying temperature one that's gonna make them uh, enjoy and have fun and, and laugh and, and find the commonalities and feel good factor of them being best friends and all that, right? Then I can move into something. Did you guys see the girls fighting outside? Oh man, these two girls, they were fighting outside. Me and my girl, we were walking in. The bouncer guy is just standing there, right? Dude's doing nothing. So I go up to him, I'm like, hey man, you should probably sort this out, you know? So he's like, oh, okay. So he walks over there, right? This big Freddie Flintstone looking dude, grabs one of the girl, the other girl is free to go. It's a two in one fight at this point, right? So all of a sudden, she reaches over, pulls the girl's top down. Now look, normally I'm like, welcome to London. But this was one of those saggy, baggy boobies from National Geographic. It was the worst. And then I'm done there, right? Now, in that story, the DHVs are pre-selection with me walking in with a girl, right? Leader of men, me telling the bouncer what to do. Protector of loved ones, I'm also walking in with the girl, so I should protect her and tell the bouncer to handle it. It's not my problem. I don't get involved in the fight with two girls. I don't go there myself to deal with it. I don't, it's not my problem. It's, I'm a high value guy. I got shit going on in here. But I do want it solved because it might compromise the safety of who I'm with. So I'll get the bouncer on it. So, okay, protect your loved ones. Willingness to walk away, uh, not there, not at all. 
Um, willingness to emote, healthy emotions, yeah, that's all there. And then successful risk taking, yeah, because some guys talk to the bouncer and then they don't go into the club. And obviously, if I'm in the club sharing the story, I've made it in. So successful risk taking while minimal is still there. And that's how I differentiate between the two and that's how I kind of run it uh, between the two. Um, what I can do on your uh, captivators, right, your DHV stories, is to flesh them out a bit. So I can add, I ended up talking to the guy that was standing there next to them. His name was George. And he said that they were fighting over him. And my first thought was, who fights over a guy named George, you know? I can add that in there. I can add, um, you know, when girls fight, it's different than when guys fight, right? When guys fight, it's like everybody loses. You're just, it's not even worth looking at. But when two girls fight, you want to like grab popcorn and stick around. Well, that was going on. I can extend it and cut it down as much as I see fit. So that's what I want to do uh, in DHVs. I want to be seen locked in inside the group, you know, sitting down ideally while girls are on the edge of their seats and waiting for the next bit of that story to come out so that when it does, they all laugh and then the room can see me almost in slow motion getting laughter from attractive girls so that if I'm going to open the next set, it facilitates all that for me. Hopefully that answers your question, which it should. Jimmy, how do you re-engage after breaking rapport? You just get on with your material. It's the next routine. It's just the next routine. You say, oh, we're totally broken up. That's it. I want my sweaters back. You know what? I was thinking about it today. And then you just get into it. It's just a conversational pang. It's just, a, it's a pebble you throw, like an egg, right? You throw it and then you just keep going. You keep the material rolling out. Don't wait for a response. What's the difference between shit test and rejection? Good question. Um, sometimes, often, you don't know which is which. Is she not into you or is she into you and she's testing shit? Or is she just not into you and she wants to have a laugh and she wants to have a go and test some shit, right? So don't worry about it. The whole point is, is that you get back to your material. You just need to be able to handle whatever comes out with a soundbite. If she says, um, you know, uh, oh, can you leave us alone? I go, I will if you will. But better than that, Brad Pitt or Angelina, that's really what I need to solve here. And then I can keep that going. Now, if she comes back and says, no, seriously, can you leave me alone? Then I'll say, yeah, I'll leave you alone. I know how this works. And then I kind of will just fuck off and get into a set really quickly, right? Um, if she does come back from the uh, that shit test thing, then I know it was just a shit test. She was just seeing, you know, how is I going to deal with that? Sometimes girl asks you, you know, uh, oh, so you think you're really smooth, you know? Oh, do you think you're you're, you're a player? Oh, you seem like a player. It's like all these kind of things. And that's just her kind of shit testing the way you answer stuff. So I don't ever assume, oh, she wants me to leave. Oh, she's shit testing me. I don't care. Her reacting and creating a reaction or trying to neg me is just to elicit a response. So as long as I have something that rebuttals that, that uh, basically that neg, I can... Um, handle it and then move back to my material, which is where I'm going to win her over anyways, with DHVs, with value and with everything else. Can you give an example of a non can DHV story from your own life? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I was at the supermarket uh, the other week and there was this um, thought in my mind of why I was there because I was there buying pasta and I remember thinking out loud like why am I here buying pasta while I got invited to a pasta dinner and the thing was was that it was my ex-girlfriend she had invited me to come over and have a pasta dinner and in the midst of me getting there, she says, I forgot the pasta. So basically, this is the kind of girl we're dealing with, right? Now I kind of get reminded why, why we broke up, right? But anyways, whatever, I'm there. Uh, she says, can you just run out and get some pasta while I get everything else going? I said, sure, absolutely. So I'm there having these thoughts, looking for pasta, and I feel this kind of pull on my shirt. So I turn around and there's no one there. 
Well, there is, right? There's a kid there, but I hadn't seen him at first. So I kind of looked down and now he's there. And he looks at me and he says, I've lost my mommy. Can you help me find her? And I was like, oh, God, man, I am not in the headspace to deal with this. You know, I got ex-girlfriend shit I'm, I'm thinking about, pasta that's not happening. Oh, but then I thought to myself, you know what? There was a time when I was, I think I was five years old. And although my brother is five years older, he's, he was 10 at the time. One time we lost mom at the mall and my brother went ape shit. He lost his fucking cool, right? And I remember being five and keeping us you know, together and keeping him calm and eventually finding mom. So I felt like I was able to handle that. So I said, yeah, dude, for sure, I can help you out. So the first thing I did, I grabbed him a cookie. It just seemed like the right thing to do. The second thing that I did, I grabbed me a cookie. They're just fucking good cookies, I had to. Not a great story. We walked around all the aisles trying to find the kid's mom. I'm like, hey man, what's your name? He's like, Brandon. I'm like, hi, I'm Wem. You know, is this your mom? Is that your mom? He's like, no. I'm like, do you see your mom? He's like, no. I'm like, okay. So we get through all the aisles. All of a sudden, his mom isn't there. So I'm like, okay, I know what to do now. We'll go to customer service. Let them handle this shit. So I go to customer service. I tell them what's up. They do the whole intercom thing, right? They go, hey, you know, got a kid here. If you're the mom, come find him. No one shows up. All right, now this is getting weird, you know? So all of a sudden, this woman comes rushing in and she's like, oh my God, Brandon, thank God you're safe. And she gives him a hug and I'm like, okay, finally a mother arrived, good. So she turns around and, she's, and she tells the people, I was at a Whole Foods, she tells the, the guy, oh my God, I completely forgot that I brought him. Usually I come here uh, before I pick him up and today I came after and I completely forgot. Thank you so much for keeping him safe. And the guy at Whole Foods goes, no problem, miss, it's my pleasure. It's, this happens all the time. I'm glad we can get your kid back to you. Uh, enjoy your day, the rest of your day. And I'm just standing there like, wait a second, dude. Hold on a second. I did all the fucking work here. I walked with the kid. I kept him calm. I got him a cookie. I did everything. You're trying to take credit for my work? Mm -mm -mm. So I figured, you know what? Let me try to say something to him to kind of let everybody know that me and this kid, we... we, we we went through some shit in this fucking Whole Foods and we got down to the problem. So as he's leaving, I just go, hey, yo, Brandon. And he turns around and I go, don't let him keep you down, man. Just keep your head up, all right? You keep it real. And he goes, you keep it real too, Wem. Have a going, man. And his mom kind of like looks at me and looks at him and she's like, who is that guy? And as they're walking out, he goes, that's my new friend, Wem. And then they walk down to the distance. I never saw them again. End of story. That story, if you go through the evolutionary attraction switches, there's a lot of them in there. There's the pre-selection, right? Ex-girlfriend, cooking dinner, all that. The subtlety in that one is that she forgot the pasta. That's the kind of girl I'm dealing with, AKA she's probably hot, trying to cook some dinner. Um, another one is protector of loved ones, right? Leader of men with the story with my brother. Uh, willingness to emote healthy emotions, that's all there. Um, willingness to walk away, again, not there. I'd rather demo willingness to walk away live when I'm able to say, hey, let's slow this down. You know, oh, wait a sec, you know what? I gotta get back to my friends. This is a great story you're telling, but shit, I don't wanna be rude, but I gotta get back to them. But go on, let's finish it up. And then do that. I like to do that willingness to walk away, so you won't see it a lot in stories. Um, but then successful risk taking. Yeah, we took a chance trying to get this kid to his mother. And even though it might have looked a bit weird me walking around with this kid, we've got the problem solved. So a bit of successful risk taking in there as well. So boom, right there. Thanks a lot, Colgate. Going back to work, but this was super helpful. No problem. Glad it helped. Tips for befriending girls for future pre-selection, taking them out with you. I feel many think that my disqualifying friend zoning is just an under the radar move to get with them anyways. Well, that's because if they feel that way, it's because while you're saying everything, the body language and the mannerisms and the operating system is saying something else. It's still saying needy guy chasing the girls, wanting them. So something to consider, Chris. What is buying temperature? Buying temperature is the idea that within social interactions, people get these uplifts of energy through certain stimulus. So if I'm able to present the correct stimulus and present it in the correct way, then I get their buying temperature to go up. 
how to display attractive body language. Non-needy, non-needy body language is the most attractive. So if you can convey that you're not needing anything, yeah, if you can convey that, then you're gonna be better yeah, I'm off. Just, I'm just gonna text this Let's see here. What is a soundbite? A soundbite is a text file in a way, right? Think of it as an audio file. Um, a a soundbite can be a routine, a 30 minute routine. It can be um, a neg. It can be <laughs> when she says something. It's anything that's uh, essentially a file in your brain that you can pull up when needed to execute and move the stages uh, and the phases along. Francisco says, totally, thanks. Another question, how do you deal with interrupts? Um, the way that I deal with interrupts is I'm so used to, while I'm in the set, I'm not really in the set. I'm kind of autopiloting it um, delivery-wise so that I kind of see interrupts happen. Or if I see the guy get a little antsy and try to come in, I'll handle it before it even becomes a thing. Um, if you're not at that level yet, um, the best way to handle interrupts is to do as many sets as you can a night. So 16 sets plus so that you start to remove yourself from your sets to be able to see it. And before you get to 16 sets, if interrupts happen, is to just say, hey, introduce me to your friend. That's the polite thing to do. And then once she, they do, um, the friend, uh, you can say, I was catching your friend up to speed with. And then just do another story. Don't start the same story that you were in when the friend was there. Don't, uh, you know, uh, cut off, um, you know, the story to now talk to the friend and, and, and ignore the target. It's none of that. It's, I was catching your friend up to speed with, and then just tell the story to them both. Right. When quickly, um, sometimes in set, it quickly turns uh, a two set can turn into a three set, a four set can turn into a five set, right. Then it can all of a sudden, turn into a four set again because the friend comes in and then she sees that everything is okay. So then she goes back to dance. So it don't be mindful, uh, uh, be mindful of those situations, but don't get consumed by them because really all you have to do when any interrupt happens is to just say, Hey, introduce me to your friend. That's the polite thing to do and then move it along. Francisco says during a two or a three, not sure what you mean by that. How do I deal with the girl that's seeking your validation? Um, if you mean if a girl uh, is into me and is showing me indicators of interest and therefore trying to get me to validate, um, I, I qualify. I ask, I run compliance tests and I run her through a compliance ladder so that I keep seeing that, you know, to what extent does she like me? To what extent is she into me? So that I'm going to keep compliance testing all the way through. Chris says, thank you. Jimmy says, thanks for the story. I noticed the pattern. There was no one there, but there was. Is a good pattern. And what is this supposed, uh, and what is the purpose to build suspense, emotional up and down? Yeah, exactly, right? It's the same with the lunch W when I say, so I asked the waiter for the check and he says, it's already been taken care of. It's just good storytelling skills. If you can add pauses and add uh, suspense, and get people on the edge of their seats, you're gonna have those hit a lot better. Uh, what's your opinion on NoFap? Is it beneficial for your game? NoFap is the idea that you don't jerk off. You don't jerk yourself off so that it motivates you into opening more sets so that it motivates you or builds you energy. I think there's some truth to it. I think overall, our society is very porn driven. So guys are getting desensitized to a lot of shit. And there's a whole conversation that can be had around uh, the downsides to porn in your uh, psychology um, and in your day to day. Um, but I can't say that it applies to me because I have a girl. So I don't really get the opportunity to really go through any of that, you know? Um, with that said, uh, I would say that, you know, having a healthy lifestyle around that is, is your best bet. What you don't, what you don't want to do is you don't want to make it, um, a thing where it just becomes this thing that consumes you, but you don't also want to be this thing where you're not connected to it. So 
just having a healthy balance of um, you know, exercising your right to do it, but then not letting it consume you, that's your best bet. But there is truth to it. If you don't, uh, you know, jerk off or if you don't masturbate, then it will, um, in many ways motivate you or not keep you from, uh, not taking action on certain things. But you got to also maybe consider that it might be leaving you a bit frustrated as well. So a hard conversation to have. I think it's more of a case by case kind of thing. All right, let's wrap up here. Let's see. How do you deal when? How do you deal when you open a mixed set and the guy tries to put your value down? Well, you can't blame him. If you if he feels at any point that you're trying to snack on his girl, he should. He should, and you should be able to handle that, right? Ideally, if guys start putting you down, you got to be able to handle that. You got to have something that you can say to those guys. And if it happens often and you're not having something to say for the next time, then you haven't put the work or the time into dealing with it. So make sure that you uh, have something that you can say to when guys start doing that to you. And before you uh, elicit those feelings, ask yourself, like, what is it about my approach that's making guys do that to me? Why do they feel like they can? Do they feel like, you know, I'm too beta and that I'm not conveying high value male behavior so they can just get away with it? Or, you know, maybe I'm coming off like I'm really into their girls and I'm not acknowledging them. I'm not talking to the guys. I'm just talking to the girls and I'm ignoring everybody else. Maybe I'm snacking on his girl, you know, while he's right there and I'm hitting on her and he's feeling a certain way. So there's there's a lot of things that can be asked, you know. Um, that's where I would go around there. Uh, Jimmy says, porn is definitely harmful, though I had an idea. How about going to adult entertainment expo or other industry conventions and gaming porn stars? No. Although you would think, right, oh, let's go to the expo and game the porn stars. That's not how to do it. You want porn stars, you go to porn star parties and you go where they hang. Not at the expo where you're automatically a customer and a fan. I'm never a fan of anyone when it comes to me gaming them, you know? I could be into whoever it is that's on the big screens and whatever, but when I'm gaming her, I, there's no value for that. It can't be demonstrated. There can't be anything um, reaction-based on who she is because of who she is. And just being at the expo already puts that frame of I'm there as a fan trying to meet the porn star and make the dream happen of me gaming her yes can it work absolutely if you got tight game and go in yeah you can do it but i don't want to be seen in those places because i've had ex-porn star girlfriends and i don't want to be a fan in those places to game other porn stars so i wouldn't recommend that the next guy does it either because setting yourself up as a fan isn't the best way to go about it how do you feel the Me Too movement is affecting your game or the way you game. Honestly, it doesn't really, Me Too doesn't really affect me at all. I'm all in favor of it. I think it exposes the guys that don't compliance test and aren't preserving comfort values. So for me, who's a major advocate of testing for compliance and seeing where you're at and making sure everyone feels comfortable and all that, don't really notice any difference. Um, when you're doing high level sophisticated pickup where there's no sleaziness attached to it, because all you're doing is trying to get social skills out of it so that when you do meet the ideal girl, you can use the social skills that you've practiced to get her. Um, it doesn't really go into that weird kind of, you know, weird darkness guy kind of bro incel shit. You know, it just, it's just normal shit. It's just guys trying to get social skills better so that when they meet their girl who hopefully um has more social skills than they do right now they're able to match it and that's what it is so to me me too doesn't really affect at all as far as how i approach it i've always approached it to where i leave people better off than when i found them so that's just that what do you do when you fail to engage the whole group sometimes the group rejects my approach but not the target um, if that's the case, you just haven't been compelling enough, right? The group, see, when I go into sets, I'm that much uh, of an enigma. I'm that much uh, more interesting than anybody else in the venue so that when I go into your group, you want to find out what the fuck this guy has to say. So start working on what you can do to elicit those exact things, right? It might be in the way that you look. It might be the way you carry yourself, what you're doing in between sets, 
that's so important as well. How you look like when you're not in set. Are you the guy that's just there staring around looking for the next set like a fucking wolf, right? Predator style. Or are you the social guy that's just seen laughing and talking to people? Those things play a role as well. Would you recommend that you're open about being a PUA with the girl uh, I'm in a relationship with? Well, you're not a PUA, right? Um, I hate when guys say that. You're not a PUA. Why are you talking to a girl about you being a pickup artist? You're not one. You're not a pickup artist. Unless you're teaching this shit on a global scale and you have clients and you've done it for a few years, you're just a guy teaching game at best. So if you are a guy teaching game at best, you shouldn't have to hide who you are because it's part of your identity. And if you're a pickup uh, artist, right, that's your identity. It's who you are. You shouldn't have to hide it from anybody. A lot of guys like to sugarcoat it and keep certain things from girls when like I have girls at my boot camps. I have girls that, you know, are just around and I'm always upfront about what I do. I help guys get better social skills. Yeah, you should come to a boot camp. You'll fucking find that it's awesome. Most guys need it. You know, and honestly, the way that I teach things right now helps guys um, get better at their skills. You know, it 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 keeps a certain level of guys out in field that aren't doing the creepy sleazy shit. You know, if you know game, if you know how to approach this the correct way, you're not going to get into any of that creepy nonsense because it's just better. It's just you interacting with humanity and being able to present your best self so that girls can pick, you know, do they want to align with you? And if you present the, your best self, you pre, if you present a guy that's different than every other guy, most girls are going to want to align with that. So it's just being more of that. How to pull a day game. Oh, God. How to pull a day game. Get good at night game. Then day game's a breeze. Otherwise, you're just wasting time trying to get good at day game, trying to pull in day game. You know, you know how you pull in day game. Go to go to low value places with low value sets. That's how you pull in day game. If you're thinking you're gonna go to any given place and pull a ten, right, a real bona fide ten, uh, during day game and just you know, boom, it's gonna be from the mall to your house and sex. Start thinking about it a bit more realistically, right? Because any girl that's going to do that with you isn't high value. You have to consider that, right? That if she's willing to just leave what she's doing, that means she's not doing anything major. She's not up to anything. So she can leave. And if your game is tight to where she can leave and then have sex with you, it's because she's just not used to that level of high valueness, right? Whether perceived or actual, she's not used to it. So also starts to question there. So how do you pull in day game? Low value sets if you really must, but really focus on the social aspect of day game and how you're going to get her to come out with you at a different time. And then you're going to win her over there and start a sexual relationship with her after the correct amount of time and effort has been done, right? Not just try to do the one, two, 15 minute pull, and then it doesn't lead to anything you cheated a girl out of sex because you presented 15 minutes worth of game but now those 15 minutes are up sex is over and guess what the guy behind it all isn't the guy she wants to align with so she'll leave she got suckered and then you gotta live with that and she does too not the type of game that i work with what's going on everybody hello hello i see a lot of you guys jumping in right now but i'm gonna end this off right now um, otherwise I might risk what happened last week where it ended itself and then it didn't save. So forget that. Um, thank you for everybody that tuned in. If this was useful, let me know. Uh, hit the like button a bunch of times and let me know. After 24 hours, I will be uploading this on YouTube. There are a few past Colgate lives on YouTube for anybody that hasn't, uh, checked them out or heard them yet. Please go uh, and, and check them out um, in the future. They'll be somewhere to the side. And right now, uh, in 24 hours, they'll, this one will be uploaded. So um, make sure that you guys keep asking questions. Keep sending me questions throughout the week. If it's something that we can handle really quickly, I'll answer them. If not, we'll save them for the live. Um, 
it's hard for me to figure out what days are better for lives because some days I have training, some days I don't, some days I do uh, Skype calls, some days I don't, sometimes on weekends I'm on boot camps. I also have my other social stuff that I do um, and a personal life. So trying to figure out the dates um, is proving to be hard uh, right now for me. However, it's either gonna be a Sunday or a Tuesday for sure um, cause that's when I have the most time to do them. And then also, um, I'll be posting every week when it is. So at least for now, until we iron it out, um, expect it either Sunday or Tuesday. Um, but I'll be sending, um, I'll be posting on my stories, um, when they'll be. So just keep a lookout for those. Let me know how you guys get on. If you guys have any questions, send them through. And if not, I'll see you guys on the next Colgate live. And I look forward to talking to you guys. All right. Um, there's a new article, by the way, on askcolgate.com on the blog. So if you guys want to check that out, please do. Um, and then also, um, boot camps are almost sold out for this year. I'm almost finished working on the 2020 calendar. So hopefully that will come out um, in the next few weeks so that you guys can start making arrangements, booking stuff, and doing all that. Awesome that a lot of you guys sent messages today saying that you guys are looking forward to it and where to book and all that. So I appreciate that you guys are eager to get next year started and not miss out on what's going on. So I appreciate um, you guys tuning in. I appreciate you guys trying to make uh, something better for yourselves out of your own efforts and going out and coming in here and tuning in. A lot of guys don't tune in and then they leave off and they go off next week with the same shit that they were dealing with this week. You guys seem to be choosing a better route. So hats off for that, but it doesn't stop there. You guys have to now make the decision to use this shit and go out and get better. So absolutely, you're welcome. I'm glad you guys see a lot of value in this. Uh, thank you for the comment, Enrique. Look forward to talking to you guys again. And as always, I'm here. Let me know if you guys need help. But for now, Colgate signing out. Take care, guys. Have a good one.